Item Number SCP-4530 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-4530 is to be patrolled and monitored by Stationary Task Force Sigma-2 Lynch Mob, who are to maintain a 5km radius of exclusion around SCP-4530. Site-10 Communications Unit are to ensure that no Turing civilians explore the Tigard State Forest. All persons found near or within the limits of this border are to be vacated from the premises. All evidence regarding disappearances linked to SCP-4530 is to be taken and documented. Should an irradiate event occur, personnel are to administer C-Class amnestics to the parents, families, and friends of children that have undergone the event. No personnel are to obstruct any children undergoing an irradiate event. Foundation web crawler Wiccan is to search and remove any online references, images, and articles pertaining to missing persons and disappearances of children in Olive Hill. Under no circumstances are personnel allowed to enter SCP-4530. Should any persons or personnel enter SCP-4530, these persons are to be considered lost. Description. SCP-4530 designates a wooded area of space located within the Tigard State Forest of Olive Hill, Kentucky. The region exhibits varying degrees of numerous types of anomalies. Cabot L. Gardner G. and Raven Wolf S. 1975. The Signs of Abnormal Locations and the Unexplained. First Edition, Volume 1, Series 1. Foundation Research Press. This list includes, but are not limited to, heavy distortion of video quality, generation loss, and fluctuating electromagnetic interference, sapient organism experiencing paranoia and anxiety, the appearance of animal corpses belonging to that of the domestic pig and the hybrid and sheep, sus domesticus and capra agregus hercus. These animals appear across SCP-4530 in various states of decay. Most of these corpses have consisted of skulls decoratively strewn across the ground. Sounds described as shrieking, whispering, and laughter. In some cases, audio recording devices will not pick up on these sounds, save for sapient individuals with an SCP-4530. Disappearances of persons entering SCP-4530 The appearance and disappearance of SCP-4530-1 from within the borders of SCP-4530. SCP-4530-1 is an entity that resides within SCP-4530, with individual eyewitness reports consisting of a young and attractive woman located within the forest. One consistent remark about these accounts claim that the entity wears a black dress or cloak. SCP-4530-1 provokes a fear response in sapient beings of seen. An Aradia event is an event wherein five children, ages between 3 to 14, are randomly selected across a localized region that prompts them to wake up at a certain time, in some cases at approximately 3 am, leave their homes and walk to the location of SCP-4530. Intervals between events can range anywhere from weeks to years. Leak S, Bolin A, and Cunningham S, not dated. Documenting Extranormal Events. 3rd Edition, Volume 1, Foundation Research Press. Addendum 4530.1 First Contact SCP-4530 was discovered in 1984, following the disappearance of a young woman named Megan Fay. According to the Kentucky State Police Department, Mrs. Fay had left her apartment on November 27, 1982 at 3 a.m. Mrs. Fay had entered the region of SCP-4530 and never returned. Eyewitness accounts claimed that she walked barefoot all the way to the region. Police led a three-man investigation to the forest the following morning, but never returned. A sampling of the missing persons posters can be found below. Have you seen this woman? Name: Megan L. Fay. Date of occurrence: November 27, 1982. Eye color brown, hair color black, height 177.8 cm, weight 167 kg, age 27, 
Report Description Last seen headed towards the Tigard State Forest. If you've seen this woman, please contact her husband, Mr. Bay, at Her family is worried sick. If you have any information, don't hesitate to call. Missing Name Clyde O. Harland Date of Occurrence December 6, 1982 Eye color black Hair color blonde Height 185.4 cm Weight 182 kg Age 15 Report Description Clyde was last seen heading to the State Forest. If you have any information on his whereabouts, call have you seen this boy? Name: Lucas V. Raymond Date of Occurrence June 12, 1990 Eye color hazel Hair color black Height 125 cm Weight 102 kg Age 12 Report Description Lucas is a young boy with black hair. He wore a Batman t-shirt at the time of his disappearance. He was last seen approaching the State Forest. If you've seen him, please call this number. Lost Girl Name Susie L. Fay Date of Occurrence May 20, 1983 Eye color brown Hair color brown Height 96 cm Weight 32.6 kg Age 3 Report Description the exact details of the poster appear to have been torn off at the bottom, except for the words, Please bring her back, in black marker on the top. Addendum 4530.2 Exploration Log Transcripts Exploration Log Transcript Date December 14, 1995 Personnel used AI Control Drone Grimasi is utilized to navigate and explore SCP-4530. The drone model used is a standard all-terrain traversal model equipped with a standard camera for exploratory purposes. Begin Log One second. The camera turns on as the drone moves further away from the exclusion zone and onto the path and deeper into SCP-4530. Thirteen seconds. Grimasi continues down the path. Occasionally turn the camera on its head to view the terrain. 39 seconds. Grimasi stops moving. It turns its head to the left side to see. There is nothing there. 48 seconds. Grimasi continues forward. The camera finds the skull of a sheep on the ground in front and navigates around it. Grimasi captures the corpse of a pig to its right, impaled on a tree branch. The entrails are visible from the other end of the branch. The corpse appears to have died recently. 1 minute 3 seconds. Grimasi's camera experiences a slight decline in video quality. Grimasi picks up what sounds like barely audible whispering from its recorder. This is the first instance of SCP-4530's effect on electronics. 1 minute 54 seconds. The corpse of a pig is seen on a tree stump. The pig appears to have been dismembered across the torso from the head. The corpse appears to have been killed recently. Grimasi investigates the corpse for a few minutes before moving on. 3 minutes, 19 seconds. A large pit is discovered in the middle of the road. The camera pans closer to the hole and turns on its light. Inside the pit are hundreds of dolls made of wicker and black snake-like organisms moving around the hole. Each of the dolls are identical having button eyes, yarn for hair, and ragged cloth for clothes. The dolls and snakes are too far out of reach for a closer look. The drone moves away and continues around the hole. 428 At this point, distorted whispering can be heard from the left of the drone. Gramasi ceases moving and turns its camera to the direction of the sound, only for the video and audio feed to cut off. 929 the camera and audio feeds come back online. Grimasi's camera is looking up at a destroyed tree. Static can be heard from the audio, and the visual feed on the camera is black and white. 9.45 The drone backs away from the tree. It gets darker through the feed. It becomes clear that the path is nowhere to be seen. 
9.50 Grimasi continues forward into the trees. The visual feed continues to decline significantly. The surrounding environment continues to get darker. 10.03 Grimasi ceases movement for 5 seconds before the audio and visual feed cut out. End log. Exploration Log Transcript Date December 18, 1995 Personnel used DA-8328 DA-8328 is equipped with a standard flashlight, a body camera, two bottles of water, and three camera-mounted tripods used for monitoring anomalous activity while undercover. Begin Log Com links up. Can you hear us, DA-8328? Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Good. Proceed down the path. DA-8328 walks down the pathway to SCP-4530. There is silence for the next ten seconds, before its recorder picks up distorted laughter nearby and he stops. Jesus fuck, did you hear that? Scared the shit out of me. Yes. The fuck was that? None of your concern. Keep moving. Asshole. DA-8328 continues down the path for five minutes. DA-8328's camera captures an oddly shaped bundle of sticks and branches off the path to the left. Alex, do you see that pile of wood to the left? Hey, uh, yeah. Yeah, I think I see it. Don't tell me that I have to go there, please. Approach the object. <clears throat> Fine. DA-8328 walks away from the path and faces the direction of the object. He climbs over a log before slowly approaching the object. It appears to be a mass of sticks and branches folded and arranged together to form a small shack. So I'm, uh, here. It looks like, uh, Eeyore's house or something. Alex, do you think you can fit into the entrance? Doubt it. Not because I really don't want to go in there but also because that little rabbit hole is too small for me to go in. DA-8328, use the tripods that were given to you. DA-8328 puts down his backpack and unzips it. Oh no. What? What is it? I, uh, was there always one tripod here? Because I only have one left in my bag. That's impossible. We gave you three of them. How did you lose the rest? I, I don't know. I just… I swear. If I felt something touch it, I would have known. Forget it. Just make do with the one you have. DA-8328 sets up the tripod and attaches the camera on the head. He props it up somewhere in front of the shack's entrance, hidden inside a bush. All done. Excellent. Now you can come back to the path. Do you remember where it was? Uh, yeah, I think so. DA-8328 stands up and heads over to the log that he passed over a few minutes ago. DA-8328 continues to walk through the wooded area for 20 seconds before pausing. Uh, guys? What is it? I can't find the path anymore. Keep walking forward. You'll find it eventually. Alright, I'm fine. This is fine. I'll find it. I can find it. DA-8328 continues walking into the forest, heading deeper and deeper within, until it starts to get darker. DA-8328, you can stop now. DA-8328 continues to walk deeper within the forest, the surrounding area starting to become devoid of light from the outside. Alex? DA-8328 starts walking slowly. Soft murmuring can be heard from him. Alex! DA-8328 ceases movement. The visual feed then cuts out completely. However, the audio feed does not. Wet crunching sounds and distorted singing and laughter can be heard through the radio over DA-8328's murmuring. Command attempts to re-establish visual connection with DA-8328. They are successful doing so, but the audio feed is cut out completely. Alex, can you hear me? The camera's visual feed is now colored a dark gray hue and suffering from generation loss. The feed is shaky, assumed to be DA-8328 running away from something. D-8328 
SDA-8328 continues to run before slowing down and stopping completely. Alex, respond! He leans forward against the tree, presumably to catch his breath. He looks around for a few seconds, before he is violently pulled to the ground by unseen force. When he comes to, a feminine figure is standing across him wearing a black cloak concealing the face. Assumed to be SCP-4530-1. Listen to me, Alex. Alex! The figure raises its hand and makes a gesture with its fingers, urging D-88328 to come closer. White noise can be heard increasing in frequency as D-88328 slowly walks to the entity until they are close to each other and stops. The frequency distortion gets louder as the entity appears to take off its hood, before the visual and audio feed are cut out again. Further attempts at re-establishing connection yielded no results. End log. Exploration Log Transcript Date December 18, 1995 Personnel used. One standard camera with tripod attachment. Begin log. One second. The camera turns on. D-88328 is seen fixing the tripod and looking at the camera. D-88328 leaves the vicinity and walks away from the camera's view of the shack's entrance. 1 minute 27 seconds. First sign of movement. A small snake crawls into the entrance of the shack, followed by three more snakes. 1 minute 33 seconds. The video resolution declines slightly. Noises emanating from the audio feed start to decline into static and highly distorted screaming. 3.49 D-88328 appears in the frame, walking as if in a trance. He stops walking and begins to bend forward, coughing and gagging. The video quality starts to degrade. 3.55 D-88328 puts his hand on a nearby tree and vomits what appears to be a common toad. Bufo Bufo D-88328 vomits about a dozen of these animals and can be heard crying. The snakes that entered the shack are seen leaving at this time as the feed declines in quality. 401. A black goat walks in front of the camera and approaches D-88328. It opens its mouth and appears to talk to him. Further review of the footage audio reveals no sound was made by the animal during that time. 432. The visual feed begins to turn to a darkened blue hue. The goat moves to the front of the wooden construct and lies down. A pale human hand then appears out of the shack, grasping the ground in front of it as D-88328 starts sobbing even louder before the feed deteriorates to heavy static and cuts out. Addendum 4530.3 Recovery Interview Log On March 26, 1997, all video files taking up SCP-4530 have become corrupted. An entire unit was established for the purpose of exploring SCP-4530's inner regions and to recover the original cartridges. Mobile Task Force New 10 Random Hallmarks was sent into SCP-4530. Interview Log Date September 13, 1997 Interviewer Dr. Piston Interviewed Carly Draken, former member of MTF New 10. Begin log. State your name, please. Carly Draken, field agent. All right. Can you describe what you experienced when you and your team were sent into SCP-4530? Subject does not respond. We've given enough time for you. Can you please answer the question? We we went into the forest. We went in there with the purpose of recovering any data we had on SCP-4530. And how long did it take you to find the missing cartridges? We didn't. Why? We spent hours trying to find the drone and the cameras. It felt like we were going in circles. Wouldn't be surprised if that were the case. Agent Draken shifts in her seat and clears her throat. So, um, we spent around hours before we… we, uh… Found one of the guys you sent in there. D-88328? Yeah, that guy. When we found him, he was… he was… Agent Draken tilts her head. She then closes her eyes and pinches the bridge of her nose. Ah, fuck.
This isn't going to get out of my head. He was lying down in the dirt. He had these mushrooms and moss and roots all over him and coming out of his… his… Uh, you mean his orifices? Ye yes His eyes were gone. Couldn't tell if they were too sunken inside or they got removed but… But the poor sod was a pale blue color. He had roots entangling his throat and mouth and nearly everywhere over his corpse. Some shrooms were sticking out of his ears too. His body cam was gone, however. And that was the point you encountered the entity? Yes. We encountered SCP-4530-1 in there. We didn't know it at first, but she just appeared out of nowhere, like she was behind us the whole time. Agent Draken pauses for a moment to drink water before continuing. She did something to me. To all of us. We just stood there gawking like idiots. We couldn't even lift a finger. Next thing I knew I was… I was just frozen in… in… in fear. Like I could see this… Christ. I don't even know how to describe it. Looking at us. Please continue. She pulled out her hand and did these weird gestures and… and Mikey, he… he got torn apart. It happened so fast. And then Jake started laughing. He was fucking laughing. I was… He just wouldn't stop. He just bent over and vomited these frogs from his mouth while he was still laughing. What else happened? Jake's skin. His skin started to peel off. It started from the top of his forehead and just went its way down. He… His suit and clothes also peeled off of him too. He was still laughing. He looked at me and wouldn't stop laughing. He just kept staring at me with a skinless, grinning face. What else did she do? Did she do anything to you? She… I remember her choking me. She just lifted her hand and then I just couldn't breathe. Agent Draken starts to fidget in her seat. She looks visibly uncomfortable. Look, how long do we have to keep going with this? Just one more question. What? Where did you get the tattoo, Draken? What? what There is a tattoo in the shape of an A behind your neck, Draken. Where did you get it? I've… I've always had it. What do you mean? I see. I think we're done here, then. There's… there's something else. That woman in the woods. I can almost feel like… I can feel her thoughts. I know what she wants. Could you elaborate on that? The kids. She takes them with her because she needs them. She's angry. She hates him so, so much. She wants him to suff. Agent Draken proceeds to stutter and gag for one minute. Hey, are you okay? Do you need any? Agent Draken proceeds to vomit. A small, black, serpentine creature emerges from the vomitus and slithers away before dissipating outside the door of the room. I'm fine. End log. Note. On September 13, 1997, Field Agent Carly Draken went missing. Agent Draken's disappearance was reported as an internal securities breach and a site-wide investigation was put in place for her. However, there was no evidence of her disappearance, with the only evidence being mounds of soil and a doll made of wicker on top of her bed, located within her quarters. Investigation into the incident is still ongoing.